Good evening. Guten Abend. Let's begin with prayer. Lass uns mit Gebet anfangen. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you again for this evening worship. Lieber Herr Vater, ich danke dir ein weiteres Mal für diese An Andacht. Und danke, dass wir täglich äh, morgens und abends vor dir erscheinen können, um deine Gnade zu erhalten. Und bitte öffnet unseren Verstand, dass wir deine Gedanken verstehen können. Und dass es uns näher zu dir zieht, damit wir eine engere einen engeren Wandel mit dir haben können. Und danke, dass du uns bereits so viel schon von dem Erlösungsplan erklärt hast. Aber bitte hilf uns immer noch weiter zu verstehen und vor allem die ähm, Teile, die noch fehlen. And you can fulfill it in our Damit wir dann diesem Plan folgen können und du ihn in uns erfüllen kannst. Und äh, bitte arbeitet deswegen heute Abend an unserem Verstand und hilf uns, uns Ablenkungen äh, zu widerstehen. And we ask for your presence now in Jesus name. Und wir bitten jetzt um deine Gegenwart in Jesu Namen. Amen. Ah. Okay, um, this evening we want to look at the second Passover. Heute Abend wollen wir uns das zweite Passa anschauen. And uh, to do so, let's turn to Numbers chapter 9. Um das zu machen, gehen wir zu 4. Mose 9. And uh, let us begin in verse 1. Und wir fangen in Vers 1 an. In Numbers chapter 9, beginning verse 1. Peter Mose 9, und wir fangen Vers 1 an. And we want to read down to verse 14. Und wir wollen bis Vers 14 lesen. It says, And the Lord spake unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai in the first month of the second year after they were come out of the land of Egypt, saying, Let the children of Israel also keep the Passover at his appointed season. In the fourteenth day of this month, at even, ye shall keep it in his appointed season, according to all the rites of it, and according to all the ceremonies thereof shall ye keep it. And Moses spake unto the children of Israel that they should keep the Passover. And they kept the Passover on the fourteenth day of the first month, at even, in the wilderness of Sinai. According to all that the Lord commanded Moses, so did the children of Israel. And there were certain men who were defiled by the dead body of a man, that they could not keep the Passover on that day. And they came before Moses and before Aaron on that day. And those men said unto him, We are defiled by the dead body of a man. Wherefore are we kept back, that we may not offer an offering of the Lord in his appointed season among the children of Israel? And Moses said unto them, Stand still, and I will hear what the Lord will command concerning you. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If any man of you or of your posterity shall be unclean by reason of a dead body, or be in a journey afar off, yet he shall keep the Passover unto the Lord. The fourteenth day of the second month at even, they shall keep it, and eat it with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They shall leave none of it unto the morning, nor break any bone of it, according to all the ordinances of the Passover, they shall keep it. Okay, so, so now until verse 12 for now. It's as much as verse 12. So here we see, yeah, there was a special um, ordinance or commandment given by God for those that were defiled on the day of Passover. Also here we see that in a bestimmte Verordnung um, für oder ja, für die ähm, gemacht wurde, die an Passa ähm, verunreinigt waren. Or those that were on a far journey and they could not partake of it. 
oder diejenigen, die auf einer weiten Reise sind und nicht daran teilnehmen konnten. So, und die special ordinance war jetzt, dass sie es nur einen Monat später machen sollten. Die besondere Verordnung war, dass sie es einfach einen Tag später yeah. machen, äh, okay. einen Monat später äh, halten sollten. On the 14th day of the second month, right? Am 14. Tag des zweiten Monats. So, that's the second Passover, okay? Das ist dieses zweite Passover. And they were just to keep it in the same way the first Passover was to be kept. Und sie sollten es auf dieselbe Art und Weise handeln, also feiern, wie auch das erste Passover gehalten wurde. Okay, now let's just read verse 13 to 14 also. Lesen wir auch noch Vers 13 und 14. But the man that is clean and is not in a journey and forbeareth to keep the Passover, even the same soul shall be cut off from among his people, because he brought not the offering of the Lord in his appointed season. That man shall bear his sin. And if a stranger shall sojourn among you, and will keep the Passover unto the Lord, according to all the ordinance of the Passover, and according to all the manner thereof, so shall he do. He shall have one ordinance, both for the stranger and for him that was born in the land. Okay, so... According to verse 13, when was there no exception for you to be made? Gemäß Vers 13, wann sollte keine ähm, Ausnahme für dich gemacht werden? Okay, yes. So if you're clean and or not in a long trip. Also wenn du rein bist oder nicht auf einer langen Reise bist. So, just keep your finger here. Also halt deinen Finger hier. Let's go to John chapter 13. Und geht zu Johannes. This is when Jesus kept the Passover with his disciples. Und da hat Jesus das Passe mit seinen Jüngern gehalten. And uh, let us read verse 10. In der Lesung Vers 10. It says, Jesus saith to him, He that is washed needeth not to save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit, and ye are clean, but not all. So, what, what did he just do to the, the disciples? Was hat er mit den Jüngern gemacht? Er yeah, washed their feet, right? Er hat ihre Füße gewaschen. And this then made them clean, okay? Das hat sie rein gemacht. Okay, so except for Judas because he rejected it. Okay. Also Judas, weil er hat es verworfen. And we need to understand that yeah, Judas was not clean, but he was still not permitted to keep the second Passover, right? Wir müssen verstehen, Judas war nicht rein, aber ihm wurde trotzdem nicht erlaubt, das zweite Passover zu halten. Yeah, because he was actually called to keep the first one. Okay. Weil er wurde eigentlich dazu aufgerufen, das erste zu halten. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The point is, if you get your foot washed, right? Okay. He that is washed needeth not to save wash his feet, but is every whit, is clean every whit. Apart from, right, because it says, he that is washed needeth not to save to wash his feet, but is clean. So you're clean already no. before the feet wash. Because in verse 12, he says, so after he had washed the feet. This, he's pronounced them clean after the foot washing. No, he's pronounced them clean before the No, I mean, that was the very point I... A short and at the camp yeah, is it, it, yeah, it so it's referring to the let's just look the at this then again part. okay so let's look at this again so um I mean, it's, it says it clearly in the verse no it was after it says he that is washed right if this is something else right needeth not to needeth not see to wash his feet so you only need to wash your feet but is clean every whit. You're clean. So if you don't have your feet washed, you're not clean. Uh, you're not clean it. Completely. You're not clean completely. But <coughs> okay. 
Let's just read this quote here. Also wir lesen jetzt das Zitat. Because the disciples, right, before the foot washing, they were not clean. They were with all the resentful feelings and all these things. Yeah. And this is what clearly says that he said this after he washed their feet. Weil die Jünger... Und das war der Punkt. Das ist nicht der Punkt, den ich bin arguing. Der Punkt ist, dass sie haben... Sie haben been illustrated as people, that, including Judas, had all been baptized before. Mm -hmm. Right? And this is what Christ is referring to. But in order for them to... Partake of this Passover, they had, they had to have the foot wash. Yeah, they were not clean. So the point is, let's just read what this white says. Here. <coughs> it says, Christ had washed the feet of Judas first. This disciple was having his last opportunity. When the ceremony was ended, the master said, Ye are clean, but not all. For he, for he knew who should betray him, therefore he said, Ye are not all clean. So, therefore, it was after the ceremony was ended, then he pronounced them clean. Was right? war nachdem die Zeremonie zu Ende war, dann hat er sie als rein verkündet. But he says this here in verses eight to ten before he washes the feet. No, it was after. He already washed Judas' feet. He washed already some other disciples' feet. Yeah, but Peter, and then Peter, Peter said, them, "They shall never wash my feet." Yes. That's what I'm saying. So it was, it was before he washed the feet. It says what clearly says when he said it, right? So, well, well, I think you have taken that out of the context there. Yeah, okay. clearly. When the ceremony was ended, the, the, the master said. The Bible right? also says very clearly. Yeah, but you cannot just read the Bible as you see fit. Uh, okay. No, 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 no. <coughs> it, it, read it plainly as it's written, right? The, the point is, I'm not, I'm not denying it that you're clean after the foot washing, but the point is that he says the only thing you need to help now is, is your foot wash because. You've been washed beforehand. This was the point. And this even this quote says they picked up uh, little things along the way, right? They needed to have this final cleansing. Just, uh, so but the whole point of the, the point I'm making is in reg regards to the Passover, right? Is if you are um, because it says the the only people that can't take partake of the Passover are those that are unclean. So you would be saying, if you're going along with the way you're saying, you're saying it's okay for Judas not to eat of the Passover. What's the only conclusion you can come to? If you're using it the way that you're using it, right? I mean, you've read it in numbers, right? No, oh, that's exactly the same the point I mentioned at the beginning, right? That this uncleanness is not the same uncleanness as uh, we uh, read earlier in Numbers 9, I mentioned it. Okay, maybe I missed that part. You want to make your point with that? Um, I wanted to say Judas was not permitted to eat the second Passover, right? Also, ich wollte, okay. also es geht jetzt darum, was es bedeutet, hier rein oder unten rein zu sein. Und ich wollte sagen, also dem Judas wurde ja nicht erlaubt, ähm, das zweite Passa zu essen. Yes. No, he was not permitted to eat it because. Even though he was pronounced unclean, uh, and it says in the law, when you're unclean, you can eat the second Passover, right? Also, um, dem Juda, Judas wurde nicht erlaubt, das zu essen, weil im Gesetz sagt es, wenn du unrein bist, dann um, wirst du nicht erlaubt, das Passe zu essen. Es selbst so, obwohl er unrein war. I mean, it says, you're not all clean here, yeah, right? Also so he's, he's unclean. Also er sagt, ihr seid nicht alle rein, deswegen ist er unrein. Okay. So, just go back, keep your finger here, let's go back to Leviticus chapter, or Numbers chapter 9. Also, haltet euren Finger hier und geht nochmal zurück zu 4. Mose 9. Numbers chapter 9. Wir lesen nochmal 4. Mose 9. In Vers 13, right? Vers 13. It says, But the man that is clean and is not in a journey and forbeareth to keep the Passover, even the same soul shall be cut off from among his people. So when you're clean, you should partake of it, right? Wenn du rein bist, solltest du daran teilnehmen. Okay, so, so but in verse 10. It's all those that receive the foot, have received the foot washing. Also die, die rein sind, die sind die, die die Fußwaschung erhalten haben. 
So they could now eat of it because Jesus says you are clean. Okay. And then verse, verse, verse 10, right? Und jetzt in Vers 10. It says, speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If any man of you or of your posterity shall be unclean by reason of a dead body, or be in a journey far, far off, yet he shall keep the Passover unto the Lord. The fourteenth day of the second month at even, they shall keep it, and eat it with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. So, that's an unclean person here, but he can eat it The second, at the second Passover, right? Das ist eine unreine Person, aber er kann das beim zweiten Passa essen. But obviously this unclean person is not Judas, right? Aber diese unreine Person ist natürlich nicht Judas. Because Judas, he should have eaten of the first Passover. Right? Weil Judas hätte vom ersten Passa essen sollen. Yeah, but he was unclean because he rejected the foot washing. Okay? Aber er war unrein, weil er die Fußwaschung verworfen hat. Yeah. This unclean person here, we will see it in verse 10, is somebody who never received the foot washing. Okay. And therefore he is unclean. Okay. okay, so, and uh, if we just go now to the live stream group again, Gehen wir noch mal zur and I posted another, another quote from Desire of Ages. Ich noch ein weiteres Zitat von DA, also Leben Jesu gepostet. There she also comments on the foot washing. Da kommentiert sie auch über die Fußwaschung. <coughs> It says, when Jesus girded himself with a towel to wash the dust from their feet, he desired by that very act to wash the alienation, jealousy and pride from their hearts. This was of far more consequence than the washing of their dusty feet. With the spirit they then had, not one of them was, prepa was prepared for communion with Christ. Until brought into a state of humility and love, they were not prepared to partake of the Paschal Supper, uh, Paschal Supper, or to share in the memorial service which Christ was about to institute. Their hearts must be cleansed. So before this foot washing, they are unclean. Right? Pride and self-seeking create dissension and hatred, but all this Jesus washed away in washing their feet. A change of feeling was brought about. Looking upon them, Jesus could say, Ye are clean. Now there was union of heart, love for one another. They had become humble and teachable, except Judas, each was ready to concede to another the highest place. Now with subdued and grateful hearts, they could receive Christ's word. words. So, <coughs> also shows that he said, Ye are clean, after he washed their feet. Das zeigt auch, dass er sagt, ihr seid rein, nachdem er die Füße gewaschen hat. Okay, And that's so, not what it says. No, it's, I'm not well, referring well, to the Bible. Well, I'm referring to the Bible. Wait a minute, you, you, you're making this argument. It's just the way he uses this. But mm -hmm. if you go down to verse 12, right? Mm -hmm. It says, so after he had washed their feet. That's where he's finished washing their feet. Right? Johannes 13, Vers 12, das ist, wo es dann sagt, nach, nachdem er abgeschlossen hat, dann ihre Füße zu waschen. Okay, so when he says, speaks to Peter in verse 9, right? Mm -hmm. In verse 10, sorry. He says to them, Jesus said to them, He that is washed needeth not, needeth not, save to wash his feet. So he's already washed, but he only has to wash his feet, but is clean every whit. Right? So it's, it, it, it's, it's so clear to understand that you're clean every whit, but if you re remember Isaiah, before he got the revelation given to him, he was clean. Right? This is how he understood himself, right? And Christ says, if I had not come and spoken to you, you would have had no sin. But now you have no cloak for your sin. It's only when your sin's revealed, and that's what he did when he washed their feet, he revealed their sin to them, right? And now they realize, and that's why they humbled themselves. So the point is, as I understand it, when you have the first birth, you, you're clean, but until you're brought to this point where he reveals your sin to you, and now... If you reject it like Judas did, now you can't partake of it. So the only po the only point I'm making is how you're 
reading this page. Ah, okay, no, now I get what, I, what you want to say. Okay, so <clears throat> you say you're clean at the first birth. Y yes. Yeah. Okay, but this year clean is after you washed the feet. Oh. I mean, Sister, Sister White you, you, you uses this point, right? He told Peter, if you don't let me wash your feet, you can't have no part. Because he knew what was in the heart, but they, they didn't know, right? And this, mm -hmm. this is the point. So he has to reveal it to them. And once he reveals it to them, now they're unclean. And if they reject that, they, they can't partake of the... Yeah, my, my only question is, when he says you're clean, where, where would you put this? Um, what, what, is this before you, the foot washing or after the foot washing? Or? Verse 10. When he says the second half of the verse, right? When he says, ye are clean, is it before the foot washing or after the foot washing? Okay, I mean, he, Judas was washed first, so, I mean, he could say that there, and the foot wash was not finished because it clearly wasn't finished because Peter wasn't the last to get his feet uh, washed. I mean, the Bible is not always... John, John was the last okay. to get his feet yes, washed. That's true. But you don't know exactly when Jesus said it to him. I mean, you can infer that he immediately answered him, but Sister White says it was after the ceremony he said this to Peter. Okay, it, it, it doesn't matter. Maybe it's just, maybe it's just a small point. I, I, I don't worry. I, I agree with you that in order to be clean, you have to have your feet washed. I'm not disagreeing with that. Yeah, I mean, it's important because else you come to the conclusion you know, that you're already clean beforehand. And that's, that's wrong. So. <clears throat> no, I, I, I'm not, not suggesting that. All, all I'm saying is that when you have the first birth, right, because the quote you read, it, right, it, they, they, it says that they had picked up all these defilements along the way, right? Mm -hmm. So, but Christ all looks upon them as his own. He has to reveal this deep sin to you, right? Because and, unless you have that revealed to you, you will remain unclean, right? So, you'll become unclean. You, your sin, oh, you'll be open, your sins open in your, on your own eyes as well as in the eyes of God. But it doesn't matter. I, let's not argue for it. I, I, I will, will look at it, but I'm not just really disagreeing with you. Just. Also es geht um Vers 10, weil er sagt, der, der gewaschen ist, der braucht nur noch seine Füße zu waschen. Und das wäre ja so wie ähm, ja, nach der ersten Geburt. Dann ist man rein, aber dann, ähm, man braucht halt, also in der Offenbarung wird dir dann offenbart, dass eben ähm, dieses verborgene Böse wie bei Jesaja. Und dann musst du eben noch die Fußwaschung bekommen, damit du dann auch ähm, ja, rein wirst, sozusagen. Und, ähm, aber der Punkt ist, dass wenn er sagt, ihr seid rein, also Ellen Weiz sagt, das war eben nach der Fußwaschung. Yes. Okay. So, so you need to have your foot washed and then you are clean and then you can partake of the Passover. Okay. Also, du musst deine Füße müssen gewaschen werden und dann bist du rein und dann kannst du am Passa teilnehmen. Okay. So when we therefore go back to Numbers chapter 9. Und jetzt gehen wir nochmal zurück zu 4. Mose 9. So, what my question is then, in the last number of the how would a person be unclean that he can't partake of the Passover? And then is the question, in 4. Mose 9, how could then, also, how is a person unrein that she not be Passover? Yeah, I mean, we come to this point. I mean, okay. We come there noch to this point. I mean, this, as I mentioned, when we go back to Numbers 9, verse 10, this unclean person is a different unclean person than Judas. Was unclean. Became unclean because they rejected the revelation yes. of his sin. Also, 4. Mose 9, in Vers 10, diese unreine Person hier ist nicht dieselbe wie Judas, weil Judas wurde unrein, weil er eben die Offenbarung verworfen hat. Yeah, bei der the, the point I'm making is, this person's uncleanness is not being held accountable to him. Exactly. Yes. Okay, and that's the point I was making with verse 10. They were washed, but they were not clean. That they had to be had the foot washing in order to be fully free, but it wasn't being held accountable to them until they reject that because they reject the sin. Also, diese unreine Person ähm, hier in Vers 10, die ist eben nicht so rechenschaftspflichtig, weil es ist ja erst, wenn dir das offenbart wird ähm, und du dann die 
Pluswaschung erhältst, dann wirst du, dann wirst du rein. Und wenn du es verwirrst, genau, dann ähm, bist du eben unrein. Ja. Okay, so let's um, read numbers 9. Vers, um, so verse 10 again. Lesen wir nochmal 4. Mose 9, Vers 10. So it says, speak unto the children of Israel, saying, if any man of you or of your posterity shall be unclean by reason of a dead body, or be in a journey far off, yet he shall keep the Passover unto the Lord. So there are two things that would give you permission to keep the Passover in the second month, right? Also zwei Dinge, die dir die Erlaubnis geben, also im zweiten Monat das Passover zu halten. That is uh, to be unclean by reason of a dead body or to be in a journey far off. Also dass man unrein ist wegen einem toten Körper oder dass man auf einer weiten Reise ist. Okay, so let's look at this um, far journey. Schauen wir uns diese lange Reise an. Let's go to, for instance, Luke 15. Dann gehen wir zum Beispiel zu Lukas 15. Vers 11 bis 13. Lukas 15, Vers 11 bis 13. Hm. Says, and he said, and he said, a certain man who had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me, and he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. So where did he go? Wo ist er hingegangen? And he journeyed into the far country. Er ist right? in ein fernes Land gegangen. So, in the, he would represent somebody uh, who's yeah, gone off into the world, right? Ich würde jemanden darstellen, der in die Welt gegangen ist. Okay, but afterwards he returns. Aber okay. danach kehrt er zurück. So, and when he returns, he obviously can't returns from this far country, so he's again on a far journey, right? Wenn er Can zurückkehrt, dann kommt er von diesem fernen Land, deswegen ist er dann wieder auf einer langen Reise. Okay, so therefore he would be somebody who could now um, ja, yeah, partake of the second Passover, and when we just read here. Dann wäre also jemand, der an dem zweiten Passer teilnehmen könnte. Und wenn wir jetzt einfach hier lesen. Uh, verse 20. Vers 15, Vers 20. And he arose and came to his father, but when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion, and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. So what is this situation here? Is this 22, what is this for a situation? Yeah, the foot washing, right? The foot washing. So because he is now finding repentance and he Father has compassion on him, that's the time of mercy. Right? What does he do with his uh, rope? Was macht er mit seinem Gewand? Yeah. Takes away the filthy garments, give him, gives him this good garment, right? Er nimmt ihm die schmutzigen Gewänder weg und gibt ihm das gute Gewand. And then it says here in verse 23. And, and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. So that's now this. Passover in some sense that they have together. Okay. Das ist jetzt in gewissen Sinne das Passa, was sie zusammen feiern. Okay, so they eat now together this, I mean here it's a calf, but line upon line it would be this Passover meal, right? Also hier ist es zwar ein Kalb, aber Linie auf Linie wäre das eben das Passa mal. Because it says, for this my son was dead and is alive again. So what happened to him? Also um, Vers 24, was ist mit ihm passiert? Ja, yeah, so the spirit of life of God entered into him, right? Er wurde auferweckt, also der Geist des Lebens von Gott kam in ihn hinein. Okay, so he was lost and is found and they began to be merry. So he's the lost, the lost sheep in some sense, right? Er war verloren und äh, wurde wieder gefunden und dann waren sie fröhlich und deswegen in gewissen Sinne ist er eben das verlorene Schaf. Okay, good. So, 
Therefore the lost sheep they can partake of the second Passover. Right? Also die verlorenen Schafe, die können am zweiten Passa teilnehmen. And also when you go to Ephesians chapter 2. Und geht auch zu Epheser 2. Let's see who else is far off. Lass uns schauen, wer noch weit weg ist. Beginning verse 11. Epheser 2, Vers 11. Because this is now where Paul speaks um, to the Gentile Christians there in Ephesus. Well, da spricht uh, Paulus zu den uh, heidnischen uh, Christen. Christen, ja in Ephesus. And he reminds them how they were before they came to Christ. Und er erinnert sie, wie sie waren, bevor sie zu Christus kamen. It says, wherefore remember that ye being in the time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by the that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. So he reminds them, you were Gentiles in the past. Right? That at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. So. When they were Gentiles, how were they? Als sie Heiden waren, äh, wie waren sie? Far off, right? Vers 13, also, ganz, also weit weg. Okay, so there are also some people uh, that have then a chance to eat the second Passover, right? Und also auch Leute, die dann eine Chance haben, das zweite Passa zu essen. Because where on the line is the first Passover marked? Weil wo auf der Linie ist das erste Passa markiert? So here is where the eighth Passover in Egypt before they came out, right? Da haben sie das Pass in Ägypten gegessen, bevor sie rauskamen. And then they went out for how many days? Und dann gingen sie hinaus für wie viele Tage? Three days, right? Drei Tage. Okay, so. And we understand that this is what we studied uh, two days ago. Smite, smite the shepherds and the sheep are scattered. Right? Das haben wir vor zwei Tagen studiert. Also erschlage den Hirten und die Schafe werden sich zerstreuen. Okay. So and then we have these different groups that are present here. Right? Und dann gibt es diese verschiedenen Gruppen, die da gegenwärtig sind. So we have this righteous remnant that escapes this judgment. Also right? der gerechte Überrest, äh, Überrest, der entkommt dem ähm, Gericht. We have the ignorant remnant, which is the lost sheep that escape this judgment here. Und wir hatten den unwissenden Überrest, also die verlorenen Schafe, die dem Gericht entkommen. Then we had um, the, the foolish virgins, right? Dann hatten wir die törichten Jungfrauen. So that got already the probation closed in here. Okay. Also hier war schon ihre Gnadenzeit dann zu Ende. And we had the Gentiles. Right? Und noch die Heiden. So therefore, yeah, obviously, yeah, the, the righteous remnant, they already ate the Passover here. Right? Also der gerechte Überrist hat schon den, das Passa hier gegessen. And the foolish virgins, they rejected it, so they cannot eat it anymore. Right? Die törichten jungen Frauen, die haben das schon verworfen, deswegen können sie es nicht mehr essen. Yeah. So therefore the, the two groups that are left is here this ignorant remnant, the lost sheep, or the Gentiles, right? Die zwei Gruppen, die noch übrig sind, ist also dieser unwissende Überrest oder die Heiden. Yeah. And both of them, they didn't eat the first Passover, right? Beide haben nicht das erste Passover gegessen. Okay, but they get joined here, right? Aber sie werden hier ähm, in order to be joined, what do you need to eat? Damit man dazugefügt werden kann, was muss man essen? Yeah, Passover, right? Das Passa. So therefore, the second Passover would be then here, right? The second Passa wäre also dann hier. And this is then for the lost sheep and for the Gentiles, as we could see, they are both far off. Das ist für die verlorenen Schafe und auch für die Heiden, weil sie sind weit weg. Okay, so. Um, all right, and now we also could see that if they are unclean by a dead body, right? Wir konnten auch sehen, wenn sie unrein sind durch einen toten Körper. So let's just go to First Timothy chapter five. Gehen wir zu Erster Timotheus Kapitel fünf.
And there she, uh, uh, Paul compares the true widow with a false widow. So let's read First Timothy 5, verse 5 to 6. It says, Now she that is a widow indeed, and desolate, trusteth in God, and continueth in supplications and prayers night and day. But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. Okay, so two classes here, right? Zwei Klassen sind hier. So in the, 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 this foolish widow, okay. Und diese törichte Witwe. What is she? Was ist sie? Dead. Yeah, she's dead, right? Sie ist tot. Okay, so, and when you also go to Isaiah chapter 8, Vers 19 und 20. Geht noch zu Jesaja 8, Verse 19 und 20. Isaiah 8, verse 19 to 20. Isaiah 8, verse 19 to 20. It says, And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep, and that mutter, should not a people seek unto their God, for the living to the dead? To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Okay, so, what do they say? Was sagen sie? Where should you go? Wohin solltest du gehen? Yeah, to the wizards and to the familiar spirits, right? Also to the um, yeah, hexen or zauberern and the the these um, geister. Magicians, the toten beschwörer. So, and if you turn to them, you turn to who? It says. When man sich den zu wendet, zu wem geht man? Yeah, to the dead, right? To den toten. Go instead of to the living, you go to the dead. It says. When you instead to the living, to the toten gehst. Okay, so, and who are these magicians and spiritualists here? Yeah? Wer sind diese Magier und Spiritisten? Yeah, okay, these false prophets, yeah. And it would be, in this illustration, who would this be here? Also diese falschen Propheten, und in dieser Darstellung, wer wäre das? Yeah, Jeff and Paminda and the scenes, right? Jeff and Paminda and the scene. Okay, so, and the lost sheep, they come out of... These three groups here, right? Die verlorenen Schafe, die kommen von diesen drei Gruppen heraus. So they are connected with these dead ones, okay? Also sie sind mit diesen Toten verbunden. And therefore, uh, they, they get defiled by them and thus they cannot eat this first Passover. Okay? Und deswegen werden sie durch sie verunreinigt und können daher nicht am ersten Passa teilnehmen. And that's, that's why they get a second chance, okay? Und deswegen bekommen sie eine zweite Chance. And they're not accountable here because... It's just simply impossible because these, yeah, these false doctrines defile them. Okay. Also here sind sie nicht rechenschaftspflichtig, weil das ist unmöglich diese falschen äh, Lehren, die verunreinigen sie. Okay, good. So that would be some. There are more texts to it, but uh, I think it suffices for now. Also es gibt noch mehr Texte dazu, aber ich denke für jetzt reicht das. Okay, so therefore we can see you know, the the second Passover was for the the lost sheep and for the Daher können wir sehen, das zweite passt das also für die verlorenen Schafe und für die Heiden. Now let's go to second um, chronic codes. Gehen wir jetzt zu zweiter Chronik. Chapter 30. Kapitel 30. Because there is now an illustration of how Hezekiah kept this second pass open. Weil da ist eine Darstellung, wie Hezekiah das zweite Passer gehalten hat. Let us begin in verse 1. 2. Chronik 30 und Vers 1. It says, And Hezekiah sent to all Israel and Judah, and wrote letters also to Ephraim and Manasseh, that they should come to the house of the Lord at Jerusalem to keep the Passover unto the Lord God of Israel. For the king had taken counsel in his princes 
and all the congregation in Jerusalem to keep the Passover in the second month. So here we see they keep it now in the second month, right? Wie können wir sehen, sie halten es im zweiten Monat. Okay, and who is invited to come? Und wer wird eingeladen zu kommen? All Israel, right? Ganz Israel. So the northern kingdom and Judah, the southern kingdom. Das nördliche Königreich und Judah, das südliche Königreich. Okay, because Manasseh, uh, uh, Hezekiah, he was the king of Judah. Weil right? Hezekiah war der König von Judah. Verse 3. Vers 3. For they could not keep it at that time because the priests had not sanctified themselves sufficiently, neither had the people gathered themselves together to Jerusalem. And the thing pleased the king and all the congregation. So they established a decree to make proclamation throughout all Israel from Beersheba even to Dan, that they should come to keep the Passover unto the Lord God of Israel at Jerusalem. For they had not done it of a long time in such a sort as it was written. So the decree goes from where to where? Also das Sekret geht von wo bis wo? Von Dan to Beersheba, right? Von Dan bis Beersheba. So then I also posted a map in the livestream group. Und in die livestream Gruppe habe ich auch eine Karte gepostet. So if you just open it. Also wenn ihr das öffnet. Because this expression Dan to Beersheba you find many times and we will look at two other witnesses. Diesen Ausdruck Dan bis Beersheba, das äh, kann man oft finden und da kann man sich noch mehr anschauen. Um, so, when you open the map, you can see Dan was there at the very top at the right corner also in Naftali. Wenn ihr schaut, ähm, Dan ist eben da weiter oben. Äh, Ganz oben rechts in, unter Naftali. Dan is which map you look at? Drop trade division? Yes. Dan is the middle there, on the left. No, the city Dan. Oh. Not the okay, the city Dan. Okay, also es ist nicht der Stamm Dan, also der so farbig ist, sondern die Stadt Dan, ganz oben bei Naftali. And then Beersheba is there when you go down to south, uh, Simeon. This, yeah, above Simeon, there's Beersheba. Und wo Simeon sagt, also genau da oben steht dann Beersheba. Yes. So, and basically, yeah, let's just go and let's look at two other scriptures, there are more, but let's go to, keep your finger here, Judges chapter 20, verse 1. Also haltet euren Finger hier und gehen wir noch zu ein paar Schriftstellen, wo man das sehen kann, also Richter 20, Judges 20, verse 1. Also Richter 20, Vers 1. Says, then all the children of Israel went out, and the congregation was gathered together as one man, from Dan even to Bathsheba, with the land of Gilead unto the Lord in Mizpah. So, how many of the children of Israel? Wie viele von den Kindern Israels? Oh, right. So, Alle. Dan to Bathsheba marks always that it's a proclamation to all. Israel to everybody, okay? also dann from bis, north to south, basically. Dan bis Beersheba ist eben, er zeigt einfach, dass es ähm, eine Verkündigung ist, die eben überall, also zu allen geht, von Norden bis Süden im Grunde. Let's go also to 1 Samuel chapter 3. Gehen wir auch zu 1 Samuel 3. Verse um, 12. Vers 12. Okay. Samuel 3, Vers 20. This is now when Samuel was uh, established to be a prophet. Und da war Samuel etabliert, dass er ein Prophet ist. First Samuel 3, verse 20. Erste Samuel 3, Vers 20. It says, And all Israel from Dan even to Bathsheba knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet of the Lord. Okay, again, how many of Israel? All Israel, right? Israel. From Dan to Bathsheba. From Dan to Bathsheba. Okay. So therefore, when we go back to Second Chronicles chapter 30. Jetzt gehen wir zurück zu Zweiter Chronik 30. Verse 5 again. In Vers 
says, so they established a decree to make proclamation throughout all Israel, from Beersheba even to Dan, that they should come to keep the Passover unto the Lord of God of Israel at Jerusalem, for they had not done it of a long time in such sort as it was written. So that's now this midnight cry message, okay? Das ist die Mitternachtsrufbotschaft. Okay, because they, the midnight cry message is what invites you to come to the second Passover, right? Weil die Mitternachtsrufbotschaft, die ladet dich ja dazu ein, zum zweiten Passa zu kommen. Yes? Ja. You mean what's written? When it says, as it is written, is that what you're saying, is the midnight cry message? No, the decree. Das um, Dekret. This proclamation now. Diese Verkündigung. Because it's now a proclamation through all Israel, right? Weil das jetzt eine Verkündigung zu ganz Israel. And they now invite to the second Passover. Und sie laden ja zum zweiten Passa ein. Yes. And the midnight cry is what invites you to the second Passover. Yes. Und der Mitternachtsruf ist es ja, was dich zum zweiten Passa einladt. Yes. Ja. Okay. Good. Let's continue in verse 6. Lesen wir in Vers 6 weiter. So the posts went with the letters from the king and his princes throughout all Israel and Judah, and according to the commandment of the king, saying, Ye children of Israel, turn again unto the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, and he will return to the remnant of you, that I escaped out of the hand of the kings of Assyria. So here he says, return to the Lord, right? Hier sagt er, kehrt um zum Herrn. It says, and how is he calling them? And wie nennt er sie? The remnant that has escaped out of the hand of the kings of Assyria. Also der right? Überrest, der von den Händen äh, der Könige von Assyrien entkommen ist. So when we studied this, right? There's the righteous remnant and there's this ignorant remnant. Okay. Wir haben das ja studiert. Es gibt einen gerechten Überrest und einen unwissenden Überrest. And this ignorant remnant is now called. To join, right? Der unwissende Überrest wird jetzt gerufen, dass er sich anschließt. And they escaped out of the hands of the kings of Assyria, the king of the north, Und right? Aus den Händen des Königs Assyriens, also dem König des Nordens entkommen. Okay, so just go to, keep your finger here, let's go to Jeremiah. Also dein Finger hier und geht zu Jeremia. Chapter um, 40. Kapitel 40. Okay. Beginning in verse 1. Wir fangen in Vers 1 an. It says, The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord after that Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, had let him go from Ramah, when he had taken him, being bound in chains among all that were carried away captive of Jerusalem and Judah, which were carried away captive unto Babylon. And the captain of the guard took Jeremiah and said unto him, The Lord thy God hath pronounced this evil upon this place. Now the Lord hath brought it, and done according as he hath said. Because ye have sinned against the Lord, and have not obeyed his voice, therefore this thing is come upon you. So he speaks now about the destruction of Jerusalem here. Right? Okay, because in the chapter before, it's written about the destruction of Jerusalem. But Jeremiah, he's set free. He's this righteous remnant here. Okay. Jeremia, der wird freigelassen, weil er ist der gerechte Überrest. Because it says now in verse 4. Wenn Vers 4 sagt es. And now, behold, I loose thee this day from the chains which were upon thine hand. If it seem good unto thee to come with me into Babylon, come, and I will look well unto thee. But if it seem ill unto thee to come with me into Babylon, forbear. Behold, all the land is before thee, whether it seemeth good and convenient for thee to go, thither go. Now while he was yet, uh, excuse me, now while he was not yet gone back, he said, Go back also to Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, whom the king of Babylon hath made governor over the cities of Judah, and dwell with him among the people. Or go wheresoever it seemeth convenient unto thee to go. So the captain of the guard gave him victuals and a reward and let him go. So what does Jeremiah receive here? Was erhält Jeremia hier? No, reparations, right? He's receiving these, these gifts here, right? Diese Reparaturzahlungen erhält jetzt eben diese Gaben oder Geschenke. And he's set free. Und er wird freigesetzt. 
Verse 6. Verse 6. Then went Jeremiah unto Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, the, to Mizpah, and dwelt with him among the people that were left in the land. So, now Jeremiah, where does he go? Wohin geht jetzt uh, Jeremiah? Yeah, to this remnant that is left in the land, right? Zu dem Überrest, der im Land übrig ist. Okay, and we know the story then. Gedaliah is this governor, but Ishmael comes and kills him, right? Wir kennen die Geschichte, Gedaliah ist dieser ähm, Herrscher, aber dann kommt Ismail und tötet ihn. But just go down now to verse 10. Jetzt geht aber zu Vers 10. That's now Gedaliah speaking here in verse 10. Okay. Das ist jetzt Gedaliah, der in Vers 10 spricht. It says, as for me, behold, I will dwell at Mizpah to serve the Chaldeans, which will come unto us. But ye gather ye wine and some of roots and oil, and put them in your vessels, and dwell in your cities that ye have taken. Likewise, when all the Jews that were in Moab, and among the Ammonites, and in Edom, and that were in all the countries, heard that the king of Babylon had left a remnant of Judah, and that he had set over them Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, the son of Shephan, even all the Jews returned out of all places, whither they were driven, and came to the land of Judah, to get a liar and to Mizpah, and gathered wine and summer fruits very much. So who came now? Where come yet? All the Jews. All the Jews from Ammon, Moab, and Edom, right? All the Juden from Ammon, Moab, and Edom. So where do we read about this? And where can man darüber lesen? Yeah, Daniel 11, right? In Daniel 11. So let's go there. Gehen wir dahin. Verse 41. Vers 41. It says, He shall enter also into the glorious land, and many shall be overthrown, but these shall escape out of his hand, even Eden and Moab and the chief of the children of Ammon. Right? So, these are the ones that escape whom? Das sind diejenigen, die vehement kommen. The king of the north, Dem right? König des Nordens. Okay, so, and this is what we read in Hezekiah, right? Das haben wir in Hezekiah gelesen. So, it says, escaped out of the hands of the kings of Assyria. Und das sind diejenigen, die entkommen sind von den Händen ähm, von König Assyrien. So, let's just go back to 2 Chronicles chapter 30. Gehen wir jetzt nochmal zurück zu 2. Chronik 30. So verse 6. 2. Chronik 30, Vers 6. It says, So the post went with the letters from the king and his princes throughout all Israel and Judah, and according to the commandment of the king, saying, Ye children of Israel, turn again unto the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, and he will return to the remnant of you that are escaped out of the hand of the kings of Assyria. So, yeah, the king gives now his invitation, like Jeremiah gave the invitation to the remnant. Also, the king gives now this invitation, so as Jeremiah the invitation to the remnant gave. He tries now to save this this remnant here. He tries now to save 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 this remnant here. And be not ye like your fathers and like your brethren, which transgressed against the Lord God of their fathers, who therefore gave them up unto desolation, as ye see. Now be ye not stiff-necked as your fathers were, but yield yourselves unto the Lord and enter into his sanctuary, which he hath sanctified for ever, and serve the Lord your God, that the fierceness of his wrath may turn away from you. For if ye turn again unto the Lord, your brethren and your children shall find compassion before them that led them captive, so that they shall come again into this land. For the Lord your God is gracious and merciful, and will not turn away his face from you, if ye return unto him. Okay, so, um, so he basically says, turn back to the Lord and be not stiff-necked as your fathers, right? Er sagt im Grunde, wendet euch zurück zum Herrn und seid nicht 
so um, hellstarrig wie eure Väter. Let's go, keep your finger here, let's go to Zechariah. Haltet euren Finger hier und geht zu Zachariah 1. And that's what we also studied not so long ago. Das haben wir auch nicht vor zu langer Zeit studiert. We see the exact same message it's given by Zechariah. Yeah. Da sehen wir genau dieselbe Botschaft, die von Zachariah gegeben wird in Kapitel 1. So, Vers 2. Also Kapitel 1, Vers 2. It says, The Lord hath been so displeased with your fathers. Therefore say thou unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts. Turn ye unto me, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will turn unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. So, here we see the same what Hezekiah said, right? Hier sehen wir dasselbe, was auch Hezekiah gesagt hat. If you return unto the Lord, he will return unto you. Wenn ihr zum Herrn umkehrt, wird er zu euch umkehren. Be not as your fathers, Unto whom the former prophets have cried, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Turn ye now from your evil ways and from your evil doings, but they did not hear, nor hearken unto me, saith the Lord. Your fathers, where are they, and the prophets, do they live forever? So here we see, he also says, Don't be like your fathers who didn't return. Right? Hier sehen wir auch, dass er sagt, Seid nicht so wie eure Väter, die nicht umgekehrt sind. And we studied this, yeah, that was also this midnight cry that Zechariah here. Gives. No, actually, no, he, he gave the message to this group here. Yeah. Wir haben das studiert, dass es eben diese Botschaft ist, die er dieser Gruppe hier gibt. But it's just the same message, yeah, the same message you give to them, you give to them. Und dieselbe okay. Botschaft, die du ihnen gibst, gibst du dann auch ihnen. Okay, because they get first invited to the marriage, right, and then they get invited to the marriage. Weil sie werden zuerst zur Hochzeit eingeladen und dann werden sie eingeladen. Okay. Now let's go back to 2 Chronicles 30. Gehen wir jetzt noch mal zurück zu 2. Chronik 30. And let's see the re reaction. Und wir sehen die Reaktion. <coughs> Vers 10. Vers 10. It says, um, So the post passed from city to city throughout the country of Ephraim and Manasseh even unto Zebulon, but they loved them to scorn and mock them. Nevertheless, diverse of Asher and Manasseh and of Zebulon humbled themselves and came to Jerusalem. Also in Judah, the hand of God was to give them one heart to do the commandment of the king and of the princes by the word of the Lord. So what was the re reaction? Was war die Reaktion? Yes, okay, yeah. So Lot's sons-in-law, what did they do? Also, to Lot. Lot's Schwiegersöhne, was haben sie mit ihm getan? Den okay. verspotten. Yeah. I mean, it says literally in the Bible that he appeared as one mocking them, right to them. Okay. Also in der Bibel steht, dass es äh, so schien, als würde er sie verspotten. Yeah. But, um, yeah, yeah. Weil sie haben ihm nicht geglaubt. But here, okay, they mock now this message, right? Aber sie verspotten jetzt diese Botschaft. And um, that's what it says, uh, these people will do, they, uh, the last days they will be mockers, it says, right? Das sagt in den letzten Tagen wird es Spötter geben. Okay, so some, or the majority mocked, but some accepted the message and came and joined, right? Die Mehrheit hat es verspottet, aber es gab manche, die haben sich dann ähm, gedemütigt und haben sich angeschlossen. Okay, just the last verses for this evening then. Let's just go to the Zechariah, keep your finger here, Zechariah chapter 13. Also noch die letzten äh, Verse für heute Abend, haltet ihr einen Finger hier und geht noch zu Zechariah 13. Vers 7 to 9. Zechariah 13, Verse 7 bis 9. says, Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, and against the man that is my fellow, saith the Lord of hosts. Smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered, and I will turn mine hand upon the little ones. Right? So where would this be? Wo wäre das? Yeah, right? Smite the shepherd. Okay. Hier, wo der Hirte schlagen werden soll. So now he gathers the little ones in here, right? Jetzt sammelt er die Kleinen da drin. It's like Hezekiah giving now the cry to them. Das ist jetzt wie Hezekiah, der ihnen den Ruf gibt. And it shall come to pass that in all the lands, saith the Lord, two parts then shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. So, 
Yeah, two parts will mock. Yeah? Also zwei Teile werden um, also versprochen. But one third will humble themselves and they will come to the second test. Okay. Aber ein Drittel wird sich demütigen und sie werden zum zweiten Passer kommen. Okay, in verse 9 it says, in verse 9. And I will bring them, bring the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name and I will hear them. I will say it is my people and they shall say the Lord is my God. So verse 9, what is this referring to? Was bezieht sich verse 9? Uh -huh. the yeah, the preparation, exactly. And w that would be then the foot washing, right? Also, die Vorbereitung zum zweiten Passer und das wäre die Fußwaschen. Yeah, so when he brings them in the fire, Wenn er sie that's the foot washing, bringt, right? Das, das die Fußwaschen. Okay, because this is what cleanses them. Weil das reinigt sie. And just, just to confirm this, uh, go to Malachi chapter 3. Das zu bestätigen, gehen wir zu Malachi 3. Beginning with verse 1. In verse 1 on. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, say the Lord of hosts. But, so when does he come? When comes he? Yeah? Suddenly to his temple? Plötzlich to his temple. Yeah, investigative judgment, right? Um, so, that would be now for the lost sheep, would be... Hier, right? Also für die verlorenen Schafe wäre das hier. So right here he comes now to his temple. Hier kommt er jetzt zu seinem Tempel. But in here what does Jesus also do? Was macht Jesus hier drin auch? He washes the feet, right? Er wäscht die Füße. So feet, foot washing and here in verse 2 it's the fire. Okay? Die Fußwaschung und in Vers 2 sehen wir das Feuer. But who may abide the day of his coming and who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire and like a fuller's soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord as in the days of old, as in former years. So we see he washes you by fire and by water, right? Or purges you by fire and washes you with water. Also er wäscht dich äh, mit dem Wasser und er reinigt oder läutet dich durch das Feuer. Okay. So, therefore we can see uh, that the second Passover takes place here. Right? Daher können wir sehen, dass das zweite Passa eben hier stattfindet. Yeah. And it, they just have to go through the same preparation to partake in it, just like the first group does. Okay. Und sie müssen einfach durch dieselbe Vorbereitung ähm, durchgehen, damit sie daran teilnehmen können, so wie die erste Gruppe. Okay, and the second Passover was then given in order that the number can be made up. Und das zweite Passa wird dann gegeben, damit die Zahl vervollständigt werden kann. Okay, and when you also parallel this with a bigger fractal. Okay. Und wenn man das hier auch mit dem größeren Fraktal parallel <coughs> setzt. Yeah. Then you have also in the sense here these two Passovers, these two end Passovers. Okay. Dann gibt es in dem Sinne zwei Passas, also am Ende. That just finalize the groups. Okay. Die die Gruppen finalisieren. Und da, Gott, mm -hmm. on that note, would that then, would that mean that there are ignorant in the church who are gathered in the time of the Gentiles? Second Sunday more? Also würde das bedeuten, dass es unwissen in der Remnant. Gemeinde mm -hmm. gibt, die dann mm -hmm. in der Zeit the von den Heiden um, gesammelt wird? No, I, I don't think so, because I mean, if you look at this church line, right? When man sich die Linie der Gemeinde anschaut, the last ignorant group would be here, right? They get the Die letzte unwissende Gruppe wäre hier, die dann gesammelt wird. But there might be some other ignorant people that. No, I mean, you, you, it's going to the Gentiles now. So yes. The parable of the ten virgins is fulfilled by them, so yes. there will be people in exactly. the seventh plague who still. Have this last opportunity to receive the truth the same mm -hmm. as yeah. the other one. Yes. So the only ignorant that can be here would be Gentiles. The only unwissend that then here reinkommen, das wären Heiden. Yes. Okay. Good. So I hope everybody could follow. Ich hoffe, jeder konnte folgen. And um, yeah, that we can see these two passovers. Okay. Dass wir diese zwei Passas sehen können. Okay. 
All right, uh, then I would say we can close for this evening. Dann würde ich sagen, können wir für heute Abend abschließen. Let's close with our paramount. Lass uns mit unserer Gebetsrunde abschließen.